prominent woman asked that men help with the heavy lifting to make changes that bite. Don't leave it all to women. Fine. But in practical terms, what do we do? Trying to gain traction on such things can be like wrestling eels. There's much splashing about, but not much result. So, what practical suggestions are there for the man in the street, please? And what is that out there already that maybe we could tap into? Well, uh, Rhys Kershaw and anyone else who wants to quickly weigh in on this one, what is your advice to men? How can they make a change? Look, just noting that days from Larrakia country, I would say go and visit my friend Charlie King, who runs the No More campaign, and Charlie's an absolute legend up there, and you can look up his website. He'd love help in uh, uh, his campaigns about educating men, in particular in all communities, and taking action in relation to sporting teams uh, and banning them from games when they've discovered that they have uh, been violent towards their partner, etc., etc. But it goes beyond that, and it's the No More campaign. That's just one practical thing I think you can do. I think then also is to police those conversations that men have uh, when they make inappropriate comments or they make slide, slide comments about women. Um, that's really important that we police that and say that's not appropriate. Uh, and that takes some courage. Mm. And and you may not be liked anymore by that group, but perhaps that's going to change those individuals. And I think that can be a force multiplier within men. I know that we struggle to talk and share openly as men, and we've got to be better at that and say it's not appropriate, it's not right. Um, hey, that's not, you know, not the right thing to say or do. Um, so there's some practical things and, and, and join up some of those organisations, NGOs in particular, who are struggling right now and uh, I'm sure they'll appreciate your input and it could even be helping build or a, a women's shelter or something like that, um, something practical. So, but if you visit Charlie, he, he'll help you out. Grace, did you have any advice to offer? Oh, look, I'm going to come back to my key point, and then it starts with education. I mean, sexism is not ingrained in us. It's taught. Um, but if we teach kids about respect, about consent, about meaningful values as early as possible, and that is consistent across the nation, um, you know, in formal and, and informal education, um, I think that that's where we've got to... That, that's our best bet for changing cultures. Penny on anything. Yeah, I think what Grace said. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> no, no argument Too easy. There. there you go. Uh, Minister, how about you? Um, look, I, I think that, you know, everybody in Australia probably needs to just have a think about what they're saying, what they're doing, and the potential impact of those actions or those words on somebody else. And I think if everybody just takes a step back and thinks about that, um, then, then hopefully we'll actually start seeing the behaviour change that Grace is talking about. And I'll just quickly give a shout-out, you know, to... Um, organisations like the, the Port Adelaide football team who are using their football players to go into schools to, to teach the, the students in schools and, and using their profile to make sure that they're getting the message out to children about that respectful behaviour, about consent. And so I think there is so many things that every Australian could do and what we seek to do by this next national plan is to give everybody the opportunity to play a role. Okay, can I just say one thing? Sure. Thank you. I think, first, what Gray said, that we you know, sexism is taught... You know, I think that is profoundly mm -hmm. important. And the second thing I wanted to say is that I think we are at an extraordinary moment in this country's history because uh, you know, women like Grace and Brittany Higgins and Chanel Contos and so many others, that next generation of young feminists, uh, of younger women, are saying, we're not copying this anymore. And, and I think that has caused... A, uh, yeah, there's been a national reckoning which their courage to speak out has demanded of, of, of the nation. And, you know, we've got an opportunity here. Master, I want to give you the final word on this. Coming back to Dave's question, what's some advice to men as to what they can do? Well, I think the advice that Rhys gave is right on because uh, right there in Darwin, you've got the amazing Charlie King and his program, No More. Uh, I'd love to see No More rolled out right across Australia through all the sporting codes. And I've said so to the sporting codes that I had the opportunity to meet with. Um, but, yeah, I uh, have to agree with Grace. Uh, sexism is like racism. People aren't yeah. born sexist or racist. Yeah. They learn it 
from their social environments. They learn it in their families, in their schools and their workplaces. They, and uh, what is tolerated is, you know, the standard. So we must be intolerant of uh, sexism. We must be intolerant of abuse of women, whether it's verbal or physical or financial um, or expressed in policy. Uh, but the inequities towards women have... Some of them have come out tonight on this program. But in Aust Australia, such a rich country, why do we have such inequity? How can we, you know, be lecturing people elsewhere in the world about human rights when women don't have equal wages, when First Nations people, women and children, are victims of violence at 32 times the rate of other Australians, and uh, there is very little justice for victims of sexual assault and, I think, an absolutely inadequate response to the victims, the child victims of sexual assault.